Hello, Buckeye Nation. This week, in anticipation of that massive matchup that we have coming up, I wanted to bring on a couple of special guests. I learned a lot about the game of football watching Ohio State games with this guest growing up, and he is someone I've always enjoyed talking Buckeye football with. We dive into our favorite parts of this Buckeye football team, discuss TTUN cheating, and talk about how we think this clash on Saturday will go after the intro. Welcome to Buckeye Football Fangirl. My name is Lisa and I'm the gal behind this channel. And I am joined by a very special guest this week, my brother, Patrick. Patrick, thank you so much for coming on the show with me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to talk some Buckeye football. I'm excited to talk a little bit about this huge clash that we have coming up this weekend against TTUN, or as a lot of people are calling them now, TCUN, those cheaters up north. Before we get to them, I want to talk just a little bit about you and your fandom. Can you tell us how you became a Buckeye fan? So I first became a Buckeye fan back in the 2002 season, that run to a championship. <laughs> So that's really the first year I remember really following the Buckeyes. That's funny. That's the first year that I remember following the Buckeyes as well. Um, I think we were probably watching those games together with our dad. Shout out to him. He's uh, where I think we both inherited our Buckeye fandom. Um, of course. Those games in 2002 were great. We have some great memories. I remember watching the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl together, getting all excited and ready and making some like salsa nacho dip during the game in honor. Um, that, was, that was such a great game. Yep. My how times have changed. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate yep. on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Well, some of the analysts have been complaining about how ugly Ohio State's wins have been this year, but that pales nothing in comparison to our team back in 2002. You are absolutely right. And I've heard a lot of people comparing this year's team to that 2002 team just because of the way the Buckeyes have been performing on the field. And they've been winning. They've been winning every single game, but they haven't been blowing them out like we're used to. But exactly. a lot of people have been saying it's taking them back to 2002. Yep, defense wins championships. That's what they say, that's what they say. So what do you think of this team this year? Um, I really like our chances um, with this game coming up. If we can get past that team up north, I really think we got a shot to win it all. Yeah, There's really yeah. no dominant team this year. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And, you know, this hurdle that we have at the end of this week on Saturday really is what this all has been building up to. Who? is your favorite Buckeye player on the team this year? Well, it's definitely got to be Marv. Yeah. It's just, every time we need a big play, he just seems to step up. And... He's been incredible. It's hard not to choose him just because of how dynamic he's been on the field this year. So turning our sights towards the rivalry a little bit more, what does this rivalry mean to you? Well, it's the game. It's the one game you always look forward to, always at the end of the schedule. And really, it no other game really compares to it just the fierceness of the rivalry yes yes it's it always feels intense there's always that huge build up i know that's one of the things i love about it i mean just buckeye football in general my favorite part i think is just getting excited for the games each and every week that's why i started this channel i think <laughs> just that build up up to the game too it's so much more intense there's a lot on the line many years you know this year it's the exact same scenario there but yeah i totally I think agree. this year it's even up a notch just because of with the whole scandal and the cheating just Ugh. just yeah. makes us want to see them that much more exactly exactly so i'm curious with you know all the cheating allegations that are out there the ncaa is obviously still doing their investigation but mm -hmm. how does that affect how you view the rivalry or how does that change things for you? Well, it's just the last couple of years, really the first couple of years that they were finally able to beat us. And it just makes just makes me wonder, really, did they really earn those victories the last two years against us? It makes me angry just for our teams the last couple of years. Same. They got robbed. <laughs> they got exactly. It's, it's awful. It makes me 
angry. I, I keep saying it makes me livid, and it really does because the the last two years in the game, it, it went the way it went down. It didn't feel like the same team we'd been watching. It mm -hmm. felt completely different. Like the vibes on the field were completely different, and it was just such heartbreaking losses both of those years. For sure. And the other annoying thing this year is that Michigan has kind of been playing the victim role, like how everybody's ganging up on them. But really, they brought it on themselves with the whole scheme and scandal. Exactly. Have you seen those, their TTUN versus everyone? Because it's Ohio <laughs> against the world, right? Yeah, just just seeing those shirts and how they have surfaced, they even stole that from Ohio. It's Ohio exactly. against the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. They had to take it and twist it to, to make their own play on it and act like they're the victims when it kind of is them against everybody because everybody doesn't like them for what they did. <laughs> exactly. They have good reason. <laughs> yeah. So in light of all these cheating allegations, what do you think is the appropriate penalty for them? I would go as far as saying this year that maybe a postseason ban would be something that I think they should be considering. Anything else? Well, if we think back to our last scandal that we had back at the end of the Trestle years, um, we were given a postseason ban back in Urban's first year when we actually went undefeated. Mm -hmm. During the regular season, we didn't have a chance to play. Whereas this year, I feel like they were caught cheating this year that that same type of penalty should be given to them. I agree. I think that makes a lot of sense. How do you feel about what the Big Ten has done so far as far as suspending Harbaugh and keeping him out of the games? I mean, it's a step in the right direction. To me, it, since he's still able to coach and be with the team during the week... Mm -hmm. He's just being suspended for to be on the sideline during the games. It's not really that big of a punishment. If you... Mm -hmm. Would you want to see him on the sideline? I wouldn't mind to see him on the sideline, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of indifferent towards it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it would add another level to see him on the sideline, but at the same time, if there's any way we can penalize them this season, right. and if this is only way we can penalize them this season then i want to i want to do that of course <laughs> yeah and if it gives us an advantage too um i'll take it yeah yeah exactly so we are leading up to the biggest game of this season everything has been building up to this both teams are rolling into this game undefeated 11 and 0 <laughs> so this game is a huge deal there's a lot on the line for both of these teams and i'm curious to hear what do you think this game is going to look like it's probably going to be a defensive struggle both teams have really leaned on their defenses. Um, in fact, in the Penn State versus the team up north, when they played, Michigan decided they didn't want to throw the ball anymore just because mm -hmm. they were getting beat um, with Penn State's pass rushers. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's a old-style Big Ten pounded-out type of game. I think you're right. Both defenses seem to be really leading the team and, and getting it done when it needs to get done. It's, it's really hard to look at TTUN and actually know how good have they really been. Because, you know, one, they've been cheating. Two, right. they played a cupcake schedule. Penn State feels like it was their first real game. So there's right. just, just not a lot to look at and, and really know if what we've seen from them this year is is accurate or not. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I'm with you there. I think the defense will really be the story of this game, and mm -hmm. I'm excited about Ohio State's chances with our defense because they have just been fire. I think the first team that breaks 20 will win. Ooh, low scoring game. I, I wouldn't be surprised in that, actually. Well, do you have any final thoughts about the game or anything else Buckeye football related? Nope. Buckeyes are going to win. That's all I've got to say. That's all you need to say. Peter's back. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and joining me on my show. It's been a blast just talking Buckeye football with you, getting hyped up for this game that we have on Saturday. It's going to be a good one. It is. Go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes.